Greetings, hi, the War Owl greets you, the Armchair General of Gaming Returns. Today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the relationship between developers and us, the community, and how I think good communication between developers and community is paramount to avoiding the um, controversies we've seen over the past few weeks with Pokemon Go and Niantic uh, and No Man's Sky. I also want to talk about some instances where communication has do been done absolutely perfectly. That was with Blizzard and Valve. Uh, this past few weeks. Now I know, you're like, what? Blizzard and Valve is on the uh, the positive end of this in terms of communication with community? You'll see what I'm talking about when we get there. So the first thing I want to talk about is a little bit of history of these gaming community uh, controversies or debacles or, as I like to call them, temper tantrums. The, I would say the, the sort of apex temper tantrum of gaming was the Dire Tide incident uh, back of 2000 and 13 in the Dota 2 community. So, Valve likes to do holiday events in their games. They like to do a fun little thing for Halloween. Uh, for Dota 2, they did something called the Dire Tide event in 2012. 2013 rolls around, and they just, they don't do it. They don't say anything, they just, they just don't do it. The community believed that they were owed this fun extra community event, and they rioted. You've seen the spam in some form or another. They spammed, give Dire Tide everywhere in the world. Volvo, give Dire Tide. Volvo, give Dire Tide. It got to the point where the car company, Volvo, had to get involved and said, Valve, guys, you gotta give the people what they want. You gotta give them Dire Tide. Why is Volvo, Christopher Walken, I don't know, they do these in one take. So that's staying in the video. Anyway, um, yeah. It was, it was bad. It was bad. They spammed President Obama. They, they annoyed everybody with this stuff. And they also kind of destroyed the community for their own game. Uh, the most egregious example of this was one-starring it. So people go to this website called Metacritic to get an aggregation of reviews on games to decide if they're interested in trying it out, seeing what people thought of it. The user scores on Metacritic for Dota 2 before the Dire Tide incident was 8.5, which is really, really good for an online multiplayer game like this. A few days after the Dire Tide incident, it dropped from 8.5 to 3.7 due to people zero starring the game and spamming Give Dire Tide. Those reviews are still there. The uh, score of the game has since recovered to 6.2, but the damage is permanently done. It also has given pretty much everybody in the gaming community a negative view of the Dota 2 community itself. When I saw that happen, I'm like, I don't want to be part of this community. I'm not going to try this game out. These people are crazy. Temper tantrum. I think this sort of stuff can be averted through communication between developers and the community. We'll move on to our modern example with Niantic and Pokemon Go. So we all know what Pokemon Go is. I don't have to go into an explanation. Uh, more users than Twitter, they're sitting on a gold mine. That's all we really have to say. Um, what happened was they had this tracking system so you could find the Pokemon that you actually wanted if they showed up near you. There was a little uh, step system, so it had the number of footsteps denoted how close you were to the Pokemon, so you could pay a little hot and cold game to try to find the ones that you wanted. One day they did an update and it just it didn't work anymore. It broke. Then one day they did an update and they just removed it. All we got was a little patch note saying we've removed the tracking system, it's gone, with a bunch of other actual good improvements to the game. The community rioted because of this. Now, there's something else that they did at the same time that I think contributed to this as well, and that was removing uh, a third-party system's ability to track uh, Pokemon. So here's how the game kind of works. It, you send the game your GPS coordinates from your phone. The game sends back the information about all of the Pokemon who are near you, exactly where there are, their GPS coordinates, uh, what type they are, and how long they're going to be there, so that these calculations can be done client-side, not constantly uh, pinging the server over and over again, which would put load on the server, and uh, would um, increase the data usage of the game. So I think this is the right way to do it. Unfortunately, because it's client-side, that means that we can easily get that data. So, and should I say this? Should I say this? Uh, I downloaded the code off of GitHub, I set up my own server, and it still works. I can still track Pokemon. Um, what they did was they went after these third-party websites that were allowing people to track it from their website. I think, and this is my theory, I don't know if this is confirmed, I think that the reason they removed these sites wasn't because they wanted to get rid of the tracking, but because these sites were doing it in a way that overloaded their own servers and used way too many resources. This was not said, though. Here's what needed to happen in this instance. We needed a uh, community manager or a developer from Niantic, either on Twitter or Reddit or their website, whichever way they wanted would be fine. Uh, for these people, needed to come out and say, hey guys, 
we are removing the tag, the phrase it the right way. We are temporarily removing the tracking system because it is not working as intended while we work on a better solution. That's all they had to say. Say, we're working on a better solution. It's going to be temporarily disabled. We're going to come back with a better solution. Everyone's going to be happy. Boom. Crisis averted. I think community managers and um, the community managers as a position, I think, is highly underrated. I don't think maybe they're not paid enough, so you don't get the right people in the position who know what to do. But I think uh, interaction between a developer and the game community, especially for an online game like uh, Pokemon Go, uh, Dota 2, or uh, I get well, we can't say No Man's Sky, can we? Anyway, it's important for these games. Um, so I think they really need to find somebody who has an understanding of the development cycle of a game as well as an understanding of how to uh, communicate with an online internet community. This is a game to the community. This is, it is, it's a game. It's a game to community members, but it's not a game to the developers. This is a product. This is their livelihood. This is what they pour their passion, their time into, time away from family. Developers got the short end of the stick. They work long, hard hours for not as much pay as somebody working in the corporate side of uh, development, which I did. I decided not to become a, uh, a developer, a, a game developer, because of that. So I think people need to be a little bit more understanding about those things. The next debacle that happened was No Man's Sky. Now we all know about this one. I don't need to get into too much detail. This was the most critically overhyped game of all time. They promised the universe, and they delivered... Spore 2. Very unfortunate. What they delivered is, is kind of the, what should be a $25 to $35 indie title. They're selling it for $60. They promised it to be perfect. Um, I think that this was the result of Sony marketing. Let's look at some examples of Sony marketing. We have the interview. Remember that? They caused a international incident with North Korea to promote their stupid stoner comedy. It wasn't even a good movie. Just pure marketing. Just completely... No integrity to their marketing. Next was uh, Feminist Ghostbusters. There's a Sony marketing scheme. Feminist Ghostbusters create this fake controversy about their crappy movie because they know it's going to suck so that they can get people to go see it so that everyone's talking about it. Nobody was ever... I mean, I don't like it because there's women. and I don't like women. Well, you're just a sexist. Nobody was saying any of those things. That's like less than a percentage of the population of people who care about that crap. So... Fake controversy to promote their crappy movie. Now we get to No Man's Sky. Promising everything. Sean Murray, we say, oh, he's a liar. I feel bad for the guy, to be honest. All he had to do was be honest. All they had to do was come out and say, hey, guys, we wanted this game to be multiplayer, but we don't have time to finish it because we have a deadline to reach and we got to release it this time. I think delaying a game, it'll make people temporarily upset, but you won't get this crazy uh, controversy thing that happens as a result of releasing an unfinished product. We would rather wait and get a good product than um, immediately get an unfinished product. So I guess the best example of that is Grand Theft Auto V, when that was released for PC. The PC port of that game took a while to complete. We waited a long time, but when it came out, it was friggin' perfect. People loved it, and they made a killing. That's what needs to happen. Make the game finish it, and then release it. So I'm going to blame this on Sony marketing. But at the end of the day, um, this is kind of the other end of the spectrum where they said way too much and they delivered almost nothing uh, with the game itself uh, to the point where a lot of people refunded it. I refunded it, then I bought it again after they fixed the PC port. Um, and i got to be honest, I'm enjoying it, guys. I think I like No Man's Sky. Guilty pleasure. All right, so how do you do it right? What are some examples of uh, how you do this community interaction thing in a good way, now that we talked about all these debacles. So, Valve with CSGO. The latest big update for CSGO was it introduced this big glitch into the game called the Reload Glitch, where as you would reload, it wouldn't reset your accuracy. We don't need to get into too much about it was. It was a big game-breaking glitch. What happens? People point this out on Reddit. Valve developer Ito shows up and says, Oh, I see this. Yes, this is why this happened. Next day, fixed. Brilliant. Come out, be honest, then fix it. Everybody's happy. The next thing that happened was uh, Blizzard and Overwatch. My goodness, Blizzard is knocking it out of the park with Overwatch in terms of PR and their interactions with the community. Season 1 just ended with Overwatch. Season 1 had a lot of problems. We had the uh, coin flip mechanic. If you play Overwatch, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, don't worry about it. Stupid mechanic. They should have never introduced it into the game. They should have set up the game a different way. So, what happens? End of Season 1. In between Season 1 and Season 2, 
Developer comes out, sets up a camera, sits there, looks dreamily and directly into our eyes, and for 15 minutes, talks about what's coming up for season two, what they're changing, everything with the game. Dry, boring, numbers, perfect. This is what we want. We're nerds. We eat this stuff up. He sits there like, and it, it's called the uh, sudden death mechanic. I call it coin flip mechanic. He's like, yes, the, uh, the sudden death mechanic, uh, we realized that it was kind of crap. So he didn't say that, but you know what I mean? It was kind of crap, so uh, we, um, we removed it. And here's what we're gonna do instead. We have a two minute timer on this side with a 10 minute buffer period of a, I don't know what he was talking about, but it, it was great. Stand there, talk to the community, be honest, say this is bad, we removed it, this is what we're doing now. Perfect communication. Uh, yeah, Va uh, Overwatch with Blizzard, they are killing it right now. They're killing it. I'm excited for season two, to be honest. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope I made my point. Honest, open communication with the community will help avert disaster. That's all they gotta do is come out and be honest about it. Say, hey guys, uh, with the Pokemon thing, um, we are going to be removing this system temporarily and we're going to be making a, while we work on a better solution That's all they got to do get a good community manager get a developer who wants to do this stuff and Your problems will melt away developers and we'll have a better uh, interaction us the community members and you Well, I guess you're the community members if there's a developer watching you are benevolent Developers thank you both very much for watching. I am the war Al and I still have no closer